Hey guys, Dr. John Schaefer here. In the next 10 minutes, you will have all the tools and knowledge you need to not only pass, but ACE, the Orthopedic Clinical Specialist Exam, also known as the OCS. <laughs> I'm going to give you all the tools I use to score in the top 5% of OCS test takers with a scaled score of 757 um, out of 800. So for reference, passing is around 500. At the end of the video, I'll share what I scored on practice exams as well, just to give you a little bit of a better idea and reference point of where you might expect to score based on what you're, how you're doing on these practice tests. A little bit more background on myself, I'm by no means historically been a great test taker. I failed my board exam the first time around. I failed uh, the NSCA certified strength conditioning exam twice, uh, the practical portion before I eventually passed. So for this exam, I took a little bit of a different approach and it ended up paying off for me. So let's start by just outlining some of the resources I used, and then we'll dive into how I actually studied for the exam. So in terms of the resources, let's break it down into a couple different categories. The first category will be learning experiences or courses. And then the second will be question banks. How did I come up with uh, questions to build my testing endurance and things like that? So for learning experiences, I completed the following. I did do the MedBridge OCS prep course. So overall, this was, I'd say it was okay. Good, not great covered a lot of information, kept me on track in terms of making sure that I was reviewing lots of information daily. Some of the information I will say seemed a little bit excessive and extremely niche, things that never ended up coming up uh, on the OCS itself. Next, I completed the Final Frontier Mega Review two-day course. A lot of people recommended uh, doing Final Frontier all the way through. If you need a little bit more support when it comes to your studying, uh, I didn't feel like that was necessary. I'll go into why here in a minute, uh, but I was getting a little bit nervous as the test started approaching. I want to make sure I exhausted all my options in terms of studying and preparation. Uh, so I signed up for this. I heard it got good reviews. Um, so I give it a go. It was a little bit pricey. I can't remember how much it was exactly, but I want to say between two and $300. Um, but it was helpful to see what I knew in terms of, again, some of these more niche topics, but with the niche topics introduced from Final Frontier, I felt like a few of them actually came up on the OCS exam compared to MedBridge, some of the stuff I was like, what, what are we doing here? Um, but yeah, so I would recommend doing the Final Frontier Mega Review if you feel like you need a little extra push, a check in. I think they do it with about a month out. The next resource I used was the OCS Field Guide podcast and Patreon. So there's a lot of great value from the podcast that's free. And then the Patreon, they have like review sessions and things like that. Again, if you feel like you need a little bit more group interaction or if there's topics that you feel like are you're a little bit weaker with, um, they have all of the recordings from previous studying sessions posted as well. So you can always go back and look um, if there's an area that you're maybe struggling a little bit with and they do a really good job of covering uh, things like peripheral neuropathies as well, which is something that'll come up a ton on the exam. Lastly, a big advantage I had going into the exam is I did complete an orthopedic residency program last year. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was a huge advantage because I was doing nothing but orthopedics with a lot of mentorship and a lot of classroom time for the duration of last year. That's not to say you need an orthopedic residency to pass this exam, um, but it is extremely helpful. If you're someone who is, you know, a new grad exploring, exploring next steps, and it makes sense, uh, you know, joining an orthopedic residency, applying for one can be a great approach. However, if that's not in the cards, if it's not something that makes sense, you can still do very, very well and pass this exam without that residency. So uh, these experiences and courses helped me at least ensure I was, you know, touching on all the content that would be covered during the exam. The next piece here is question banks. I did buy the, uh, Ace the OCS books here. So there's two different versions. They're full length practice tests. Um, super, super helpful. And I'll explain how I use these for questions in a second. The next is the PT, PT ortho and sports questions. And then the PT ortho questions, which is this big yellow book. Um, so basically how I use these 
use these books as I would come home from, I'd come home from work and then I would answer around five to 10 questions in a row. And then what I would do from that point is I would set a timer so it simulated how the exam actually plays out. Um, and so I could get used to answering questions under the time constraints and just constantly have new, new concepts that I could go back to. So say I'm studying the upper extremity one day and I'm getting questions that are all over the place. So it takes me away from what I'm studying for that day and it kind of creates a little bit more of a holistic review. Um, so that that's what I found worked very well and was super, super important for me. Um, just seeing and answering a lot of questions every single day. And then what I would do in terms of everyday review, I'd read through usually around one clinical prediction, uh, sorry, clinical practice guideline. And then I would also go through, I had a big list of clinical prediction rules um, that I would review as well. So that was super helpful. This might seem like a lot of resources and even a little bit overwhelming at first, but I wanna explain how I started um, and slowly begin adding in more resources as I went. So back in December, I began to review my residency materials. I would cover larger regions, so the hip, knee, shoulder, back, for around one week at a time, looking at things like special tests, anatomy, and conditions in the area. This was super light review. I didn't want to be studying at this time, so I just took everything very slowly, um, didn't put too much pressure on myself. So this was about one hour a day before work. Once January came around, I started the MedBridge uh, OCS prep course. I would do one to two lessons per day before work, and then I would watch the videos at one and a half to two times speed. I couldn't sit through uh, and listen to them at normal speed. I would, I would have gone crazy. So I was trying my best to take notes and then I would answer any questions that come up within the course. This was one major positive that you're quizzed after every single section. So it kind of keeps you on your toes, sees how much you're attaining, things like that. Again, they're very in depth with their content and a lot of it didn't necessarily translate well to the exam, but I did appreciate the questions and how they helped me check in on, uh, again, that understanding. So, and that was the biggest piece in studying for this exam is not only looking at the material, but applying it and testing my knowledge as I went. In PT school, when I took, you know, the strength conditioning exam, um, I'd often just reread, you know, reread and try and memorize without truly making sense of what was in front of me. Um, and that's not gonna, that's not gonna help you pass this exam. During this time, I was also working home health. I spent a lot of time driving. Um, so I listened to the OCS field guide podcast that I mentioned above on the specific region uh, from the lesson that I was doing in the MedBridge that morning. And the podcast was excellent. Another piece of uh, the podcast is there's actually a website that has all the transcripts. So you can go through and take uh, notes later on if you need to. And they're super, super comprehensive. But really that anytime you're driving in the car or traveling, for me, it was up to the mountain on ski days. Uh, I would try and listen to a podcast or two. So if you just kind of mix that in, the more you can get these concepts going through your mind in different ways, um, the easier it'll be able to recall and apply for the exam later on in clinic. And then once I got home for the day, I would try and do five to 10 questions from the resources I listed above. Again, setting that timer for around two minutes per question just to simulate that exam. And then while you're doing this, you can also have your cheat sheet out. You're going to have your cheat sheet for the exam itself, so you can practice with it too. Um, and then depending on the day, I, like I was saying, I'd write out one CPG, oftentimes the one that I listen to um, from the OCS field guide earlier on in the day. So everything is kind of translating. Um, relating to the topics I'm covering for the day, the med bridge, the OCS field guide, and then the CPGs, just so you're continuing to hear them, see them, and then write them um, out. So I try and do this five days a week during the week, and then Saturday would be reserved for either a more in-depth topic I was having a hard time with, or potentially a full-length practice exam. As I got closer to the exam, I began studying uh, with a colleague a few times a week, we'd quiz each other on CPGs and review practice questions that didn't make sense to one or both of us. You'll be surprised, like even if you're studying the same things, you're gathering different information, and different insights um, than those you're studying with. So I would say that this is a super, super effective strategy in driving home some of these concepts. 
And then in total, my study plan was 19 weeks, which in retrospect was way too long and I burned out towards the end. If I were to do it again, I'd recommend between 12 to 16 weeks max. Um, and what I did like about my approach is I had the freedom to take more days off if I needed. And if I needed rest breaks, no issues. But towards the end of February, I was just ready to be done with the exam, to be completely honest. The last piece I want to go over here is what I scored on different practice exams, just to give you an idea of, you know, if you're on the right track or if you're scoring lower, you know, what does that mean? So for MedBridge exams, exam one, I got a 65%, exam two, 66%. Exam three dropped down to 54%. Um, and in exam four, I got 60%. So really, if you're around 55, 60%, I'd say you're doing super, super well. I know people who are scoring much, much lower um, and still passed a wide margin. And I know people who scored a lot higher and I was like, oh God, I'm only in the 60s. I'm, you know, not in great shape. So I wouldn't give them too much weight because again, a lot of topics, super, super niche. Uh, I did also buy the Final Frontier exam. I think they recommend you're scoring at least a 65 or above. I scored a 64%. I was not feeling too great, starting to question myself a little bit. And then, like I said, for the actual exam, I scored a 757 out of 800, which is scaled at uh, 94%. So hopefully this video is helpful in giving you a little bit more information about potential resources and study approach to pass the OCS. Um, and if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments and I'd be happy to make more videos on my approach, what worked, what didn't work, um, anything you guys need, feel free and then subscribe to the channel and I have a lot more resources on, uh, physical therapy resources, mentorship resources, all that good stuff, uh, both related to the OCS and clinical practice. So hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.